Good afternoon and welcome to Conversations on Showing Up for Kids. My name is Tim Markle. I'm director of the Southern Regional Center for Children and Youth with Special Health Care Needs. We are out of the Waysman Center. We cover 14 counties in Southern and Southwest Wisconsin. And today I have one of my favorite organizations along with one of my favorite people who are part of that organization that are here to talk about um, a couple of things. Uh, number one, overall, the awesome work that Family Voices of Wisconsin does and the cool resources that they have for parents who have children with special health care needs, um, along with professionals who support those families. But we also want to talk about a really cool, pretty much annual event where nobody, nobody counts COVID time. So we're all pretending that events that usually happen annually during COVID that didn't happen during COVID doesn't count. So everything's still annually. It's just, mm -hmm. it's the unwritten rule. So the annual event called Advocacy for Change. And this year it is a virtual event and it's gonna be held on, um, it's, it says that it's two days, March 23rd to March 24th, but that's, that, that's, the full, full days. the full thing, but it's not real. It's it's not, yeah, it's not full days. No, and no. there's optional activities in there. Yeah, so there's a lot to cover. But we, since we, we started the virtual last year in the void and kind of got a feel for how that would work. And it worked out really well. Um, and we learned a lot. So how we get everybody prepared is really the, how we can cut a lot of time out of the conference. So we have on our website, um, when you sign up for Advocacy for Change, you can go on and there are videos to watch and there are readings um, to do as pre-work. That said, being a parent, I get it. I'm not going to have time to sit down and, you know, like everything that's there. But, you know, pick and choose. And the readings and the videos are from the speakers who are going to be available that day. Um, and they're really great, informative people who know a lot about advocacy. So they give, you watch their video beforehand, um, like Lynn Breedlove, who's an excellent speaker, will be mm -hmm. one of our speakers. Um, and then, you know, he might suggest one or two readings to go with his, his talk. And you would look at those readings beforehand. Um, and then the morning of, we get together, and then we kind of really dig in the first morning on um, March 23rd, really dig into advocacy issues. Um, and this is another as a parent kind of thing. As a parent, you know, mm -hmm. like, when I got kids, I, you know, I am still, but I was even more passive, you know, like, whatever, fine, I'll just accept it. But if you can get through this day and learn to advocate with legislators, then I think, you know, it builds your confidence about advocacy overall, even if you're not interested in policy long term. I mean, from being involved with advocacy for change, I'm a better advocate for my children with doctors, you know, and, and Bridget, Bridget, what could you just for those people that don't really understand when you say an advocate, for your child, this whole term advocacy and advocate for. Could you just tell me what it means for you to be a better advocate? What does it mean to advocate for your child? Sure. Um, well, when you have a child with special health care needs, um, mental health issues, or any other type of thing, you know, actually, even a, a child who is typically developing, you'll run into issues, you know, at school at um, with their doctors with your insurance that you may not have planned on and you can either accept these these you know things that you don't feel are right or you can advocate or or speak up and um really push the bar a little bit and say why you need what you need for your child to have a more full and complete life and be part of the community um, so that's what really, I mean, from my perspective, I'm not a policy person. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me neither. That's, this is one of those, those areas that I always come into with a little bit of trepidation. Yeah. That I know it's important and I really want to be good at it, but I'm really not comfortable with no. it. And, oh, and, hey, I'm going to put a plug in too. Uh, we are hiring a part-time policy person. So if anybody... Oh 
watching this ever feels like they are a policy person, <laughs> send a resume and um, to our website, you can find out. It's uh, Liz's voicemail. Cool. Email, not voicemail. Yeah, <laughs> like, email. Wait, that was wrong. No, uh, send a me uh, send a resume in if you're at all interested in part time policy and it's remote, which is awesome. Um, but anyway, back to advocacy for change. Uh, it starts with uh, it, it will be held entirely over Zoom. It starts with a you know one or two group activities just to get people going um, and thinking, um, and then Barbara and Liz are co directors help lead the talk and review the videos and help you really kind of get your bearings of what you can talk about with your legislators where where can your legislators help you um, at the state level and um, then you're offered optional one-on-one -on -one coaching if you really feel like you know like me you, i don't know what i want to say or i don't know how mm -hmm. i want to say it um, you can just come in after this morning um, of group learning. You can come in that afternoon and have a one-on-one -on -one training lesson with our co-directors, which is great. Wow. Um, yeah, we got I mean, I, I, know, I know Barbara and Liz and yes. their experience in talking to legislatures and talking about policy is phenomenal. So you could not ask for better coaches um, mm -hmm. in talking to legislators. Yeah, and they have, I like that with my experience with them, they're two such very passionate people, but different personalities that, you know, you will click with one of them and how you want to communicate. So I yeah. find it really a welcoming atmosphere. Um, um, and then you will have, we will schedule for you, this is the magic of Lynn Runner, we'll schedule for you the um, legislative visit. And that also will be over Zoom, so you don't have to go to the Capitol. Um, okay, so let, let me see if I can see if I have this straight. So you can watch some videos beforehand to learn more yes. about what advocacy is and what policy is all about. Then you'll learn a little bit about the, the process so that you understand what the legislators do. Right. Um, you have the option then if you want to visit with the legislator, through the wonder of Zoom, is you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching and Family Voices will help set up that meeting for you. So you get Correct. the background, you get the prep, you get the support, um, you learn what you're gonna do, sort of take some of the, the uh, confusion, mystery out of it. Yes. And, and then you're, you're off and running. You're becoming yes. an advocate. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, it, it, you know, I hate to say it's just that easy, but it, it, it really is. We really do kind of walk you through it. Um, and both of your, your appointments are with both of your state legislators um, and or their staff. Sometimes, you know, if we, mm -hmm. we'll have things and staff is good because staff is the one who communicates the importance of things. So I, it, it's good to meet with your staff. Um, and, and, I would, and I would just encourage people, I've, I've, I've attended a couple of times and I've yet to then be able to get the time the next day to right. meet with my legislator. But I am going back this year so that I can be part of that 9 to 1130 because I always need to learn more right. about what's happening with the legislature, what are some of the policy issues that other families are bringing up. So even if people aren't at the spot of, of saying, yes, I want to meet one-on-one -on -one with my legislators through Zoom, I'm all set for that, it's okay. Read over, register for the day, get access to the stuff, show up 9 to 11.30, and you will learn a lot. Right. It's just such a great opportunity. And like I said, it's, it doesn't have to be applied to policy if that's not your thing, which, you know, for me, <laughs> it's not my real passion. But it helps me so much with my kids, with everyday life. It's it's just helpful skills, good background to know what's going on. We do the the most current policy updates you will get, so you'll get to hear a lot of you know how the state is going to handle things that the state handles with health insurance, with school, um, with caregiving. 
So there's a lot going on in the state and you'll find out all about that. And speaking of which, is that's the advocacy for day, advocacy for change day <laughs> um, coming up virtually in March. But as you said, that advocacy flows into other areas of families' lives. And that's, so does Family Voices of Wisconsin. Right. Is the work that you guys do affects the lives of families and affects the system? Is it's about trying to, working to change the system, building up families advocacy, but also providing families with the tools and the skills and the knowledge that they need to get through the system. So what sort of things to, okay, number one, how did Family Voices ever come about? And then if you could talk to that, um, and if not, just explain what, what you guys are doing. I will give you the in the nutshell kind of thing. We are part of a National Family Voices. We are an affiliate. Um, we came about um, as federal legislation to get families involved in the healthcare system for their kids um, as advocacy and answering questions and family guidance, F2F, family to family. Um, that's about as far as I want to go on that one. <laughs> that's... <laughs> That's we, we we don't need to, to dig yeah, any deeper like, than that. Her. That's that's the that's perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, what we do is we work as part of the um, network that Wisconsin has of family supports. So we work with um, all of our regional center partners. We work uh, with parent to parents. We have lots of partners throughout the state, and it's a big kind of brain of information exchange, which is wonderful for families. So you get different perspectives throughout the state who share information and wonderful tools. Our perspective on it is we are the family to family hub. So we really offer a lot of materials that explain things, but more at a family level. Um, a lot of the things that people, our partners deal with are legal ease and medical ease uh, and things like that, that um, like ABC for Health does a wonderful job, but it's a lot of over the head type of conversation. We kind of break it down for them. We do this um, with trainings, with um, our website, which has all of our fact sheets, which take complex issues and sort of break them down into, here's what you need to know mm -hmm. as a parent or caregiver about such and such a topic. Uh, what I'm working on right now is our newsletter for this quarter, and it's going to focus on birth to three. Oh, wow. So yeah. you, have, you have the fact sheets, and I just pulled up the website while we were talking and I see that you have you know some of the different categories include family leadership as we were just talking about advocacy it includes how to partner um, with policymakers and define your state legislatures but then also that whole government ease like you said I mean I could sit down and I could read the Medicaid manual and I would probably not understand any more about mm -hmm. Medicaid than I do right now but you have various fact sheets about Medicaid that are written so that families can understand what the program is. And we do, we have trainings that are available on the website or in person, you know, well now via Zoom, but we have trainings and we're um, switching over to short videos as well. So they kind of all incorporate. So like, this is the first one with Birth of Three where we have a newsletter that's going to work together with our video fact sheets on birth to three and our written fact sheets on birth to three. So that like, if you have a different learning style, um, you know, watching a video is better for you or listening to someone is better for you than- I, I, I don't know, Bridget, different learning style. Do you think maybe I might be verbal? Do you think I may be a verbal learner? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking outside the box here. The maybe. That's, that's true. Perhaps. So videos may be my mode of information. <laughs> yeah, so it's, we're trying, you know, we try different ways to reach families. We try to get the information out there. We, you know, send the email through via MailChimp. Um, and that's how our newsletters mostly get out uh, in addition to our website. 
and we just try to let people know what's going on. Also, uh, we send out a fan, family action network emails, which tell people about the latest policy issue. Um, sometimes that's immediate action, like, oh, and you know, the next couple of days they're going to vote on Bill X in the legislator legislature. See, that's why I'm not a policy person. <laughs> yeah, you you heard me stumble over the the term legislators before. So yeah, totally totally understand. Um, they uh, so we'll have something, and I'll say you know maybe if you're interested in this topic X, it would be a good idea to contact your legislator. Well done. Thank you. Um, yes, it, it's a good idea to contact them, and um, so we give out information like that, a policy issue information, but we also send out information of programs um, with great detail and broken out like the Birth to Three program or the Children's Long-Term Supports program and really help families understand what's available to them in Wisconsin, which Wisconsin's wonderful and has a lot of these really great programs and really great members of our, our team. Um, our network team to get information. Now, are you able to, I know you, I know you, like, I know everybody who works at Family Voices of Wisconsin. So I know that it's not, you, this is not a huge team no. that is doing this work. It is a small team of very dedicated individuals. Now, even within that small team dedicated individuals, have you been able to translate any of your resources into Spanish? Yeah, we've had really great opportunities um, and we were afforded the opportunity to, uh, through um, wonderful support in the community and with some financial backing to translate everything into Spanish. So if you go on our website, you will find all of our fact sheets in Spanish. You will find um, Spanish versions of our trainings um, there is a part on our website where you can just contact us and if you don't find what you need or you find a different language, uh, you're, you need help with a different language, you could always contact us and we could find some way to help you with a different language other than English or Spanish. Um, but yeah, we're pretty proud of that. Wow, I'm just looking for that part on your your, oh, your website. Uh, contact us. So it's about us. Uh, or contact us should be the down. I do the website too, so <laughs> doing it in the air as you're looking for it. That's I was going to say. You're doing it in the air. Yeah, so the about us. Yeah, and that should be contact. Contact us. Um. I'll figure it out and I'll get it on okay. there. Don't need, um, you, yeah. don't, don't need to take up time me not finding, you know, not looking at the right web page. Um, yeah, no, we're good. And uh, it's just an area where you can send contact us and then there's send feedback. So, which is wonderful. You know, when you send in a comment um, via anything, if you comment, if you want to send an email back to us about any of our communications, we love feedback. I am the person who like gets most of it and it's so helpful. It gives us direction on where we want to go in the future with our trainings, for example. So evaluations and comments about products that we're putting out, it's greatly appreciated. Well, and one of the things that I do want to, to highlight just because I find it really, really important um, is this whole you know, I know that on, on your website, because I just looked at it, is under the family leadership, is is the hints and helps of telling your family story, is I think it's so important that we as, as parents, as family members of children with special health care needs, one of the most important things that we can learn is how to effectively talk about my experience and my journey, mm -hmm. how to do that in two minutes, do that in five minutes, do that in you know, a, a panel or a conversation because stories connect with people. Is that everybody likes to hear a story. Well, most people, I won't say everybody, most people like to hear a story. And so learning to tell your family story can be a very powerful way to advocate. 
yeah, we have a lot of tools to help you do this, but it really drives home your point. If you're talking to your legislator or you're speaking with, you know, your family doctor, a new practitioner, and you want to explain your situation, you know, in business, we would call it your elevator speech. And I think that's kind of caught on. It's like your two minute story. You don't have to get into all of the nuts and bolts of, you know, maybe if your child's 10, everything that's happened since birth, but, you know, give, you will learn how to give that big picture that makes a difference. That is sort of explains again, Mm -hmm. in a nutshell, Mm -hmm. why your why you need the assistance that you need why you need the legislator to act on a certain issue so there are a lot of different things that just give you that that glimpse into your family's life and how it could be improved through the other person's action oh and i think that's really important because like you said even with with medical with school personnel with with the city people, let's say in a recreation department or with the legislator, what they have is they have these words and they have these ideas about what something is supposed to do and how something is supposed to go. But they don't have the experience of families about how it is working or how it is not working. Right. And so being able to tie whatever this issue is with what is the reality for our families so that they can see the impact that this has on the families is just there's no one else could do that besides families. And that's why we've had such great luck. And I actually, because of that, I ended up speaking to someone, me, <laughs> who's speaking is not my favorite thing. Um, I spoke with someone in the governor's office and then I got uh, back when it, uh, Walker was the governor and then was invited to the um, budget address. Uh, with my son, uh, mm-hmm. because we were talking about the need to end wait list for yes. long-term supports. So I, not everything will end that way. I've talked to many, you know, legislative people, uh, even at the national level, and usually you end up speaking with one of their associates. Um, but it's great because they give you the information that, you, you know, this is how it's headed, and you give them the information that Tim just mentioned of this is how that's going to affect me. So it really is good discourse. Fantastic. Well, I don't want to monopolize all the question and answer time, although I could just sit here and have this, this conversation because as much as I'm not a policy wonk, this the raising the family voice and telling your family story and family leadership, it just, I mean, it just resonates with me. It's what I, I, I love to see more and more and talk more and more with families that are, are taking care of their children because that's leadership starts in our family. Right. You know, that's, we are our leaders in our own families first, but then some, some families have the opportunity to, and the space to be able to influence outside of just our family. And that's also where advocacy then comes in is looking at, yes, this affects my family, but if I can make this change up here now, then the next family won't have to deal with it. It will be better for the next child that comes along that has, that that right. bumps up against this. And that's just so, when I meet parents that are, you know, all about not just their family, which is so important, but also thinking about the next generation of families and of the families in their community. And I think about those people that are out there right now working um, for families that maybe haven't had access to the that's system. Right. And how can we bring all families with children with disability? How can we get the resources to all those families and get all of them at the table? Um, I think is also really important. It is. It's, you know, and one of the things I would want to emphasize is that it's advocacy. It's not a partisan issue. There are, you know, people who are involved with this sort of family voices for children with special health care needs on both sides of the aisle. So we do not, nothing we take up is partisan. We do not advise people to say this party versus that party. Um, You know, it's really just kind of leave that at the door. You'd be surprised when you start talking to people 
who is interested in your issue and maybe who is not. You know, you're not going to be on everybody's top 10 list, but at the same time, it's really good. It, okay, I think I'm losing my electricity or something. I'm not sure what's going on, but yeah, you're definitely flickering. Um, no, I'm okay. strobing. <laughs> well, that is that has never happened before on um, a live webcast, and I I feel bad now because there was you know some people were joining us live, and I think I talked too long, and they didn't have a chance if they had any questions. Oops, no, she's come back. Hang on. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Now okay, there. It looks like it's like, weird. That's weird, Bridget. Yeah. I'm a disco uh -huh. from eight to twelve. You understand? There, yeah, that would be really annoying to me to be in an office that um, had flickering lights. I, mm, so good luck with that. Um, but you. I do want. I know that we do have some people that have joined us as well, and I would invite them to feel free if you have questions about advocacy for change, questions about family voices, about telling your family story. You know, please enter the discussion. You can either put any questions or comments in the chat, and I'm more than willing to, to read them off, or I'll watch the screen. And if I see you on mute, then I will call on your screen name. If you have anything you'd like to ask, share, or just be part of this discussion, we would definitely welcome it. Also gives me a chance to drink some coffee. All right, I am not seeing anything come up in the chat. So Bridget, what I'm going to do is we'll get this posted as soon as we can. We'll throw our, um, oh, so the comment is it's difficult to decipher what information is important when telling your story. Yeah. And that is so hard. Yeah. And you really have to find that, um, I think I want to put it the way Barbara Katz does, who's one of our co-directors, is finding that slice, like if you think of it as like a slice of pie, it's that one piece of a story that is essential. So maybe if you're thinking about children's long-term supports, the one slice or picture that I wanted to convey was that my son was referred for them this is years ago, now there is technically no wait list, uh, but we ended up waiting for years where, well, his health deteriorated. So really it was like just honing in on that one little thing, like the, the overview, so that you can um, tell it to a legislator who really is like, yeah, 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 I have five minutes. You know, they, you, you can't unfortunately have a lot of time with these things. So you really want to just say um, his health, you know, turned bad. We, we had to spend money at the hospital, uh, insurance, was, you know. So by avoiding this, we were able to do this. So, it, it, you know, like, here's the issue. Here's how it relates to my family. Here's what you can do about it. It's really one, two, three steps. Yes, you're talking about your, your child, though, is how how do you not, are there, are there ways that you have learned how to not like it emotional during trying to explain your story? Because there are times where emotions, I, I totally, emotions are not good or bad in my world, but there's times where our emotions can overwhelm us and then we're not able to communicate. Have you? I, yeah, I'm a really emotional person. And I was, I always talk about, you know, it's gonna come out, uh, for me, it's gonna come out some way. I'm either gonna laugh or I'm gonna cry or I'm gonna do something. And that's okay. I mean, it really is, you know, one of the things we say when you are advocating with someone for your child is bring a picture of your child. Um, and, you know, and something that you can leave with the person as a reminder. Um, and for me, it's a help because then I look at my son's picture and then I'm like, okay, I got this, you know, because you do have that little bit of extra energy for your child. So, and also know that, you know, everybody's human. If a person sees you get upset, they're probably going to understand. They're going to, you know, like, oh, I'm a parent too. I got this, you know, I've been upset or something about my child. They may not say it, but just they're listening to you and giving you a couple more minutes to compose yourself shows that they're okay with it. 
I also find it helpful. Um, sometimes, I mean, you can tell how, you know, very verbal I am. <laughs> but when I want to make sure that I have something that I want to communicate, a point that I want to make sure that I get across, is I will turn to writing it down. And so when I want to make sure, you know, back in the day when my kiddo was in school or when I want to make sure that this is the point that I want the person to understand, I'll write it out and I will have those notes and that can help keep me focused. Because once I start talking about my kids, I could talk for days about my kids. And so sometimes writing that down to remember what my focus is can help me out, um, as well as you know, it sounds really silly to rehearse um, a conversation. I, it, it's like, what? Why? No, no, it has to happen naturally. Yeah, it will happen naturally. But by rehearsing beforehand and going over those points that you want to make, it helps the rest of the body just calm down because you start to have this almost muscle memory of, oh, yeah, this is why I'm here. This is what I'm going to talk about. And it helps us stay a little bit more in control. So that whole practicing what you're going to say can also be really helpful to, you know, not let the top blow off. Um, you know, please be passionate. You don't want to sit there and, and, you know, meet someone and pretend like this doesn't matter. It matters a lot. But we also don't want to let the emotions derail our message. And that I do the exact same thing. I do write things down, but I do want to say that you don't have to have it scripted out from beginning to end. You can, you know, it can right. really just be a main point. Here's a couple of thoughts after that you want to make sure you, you get in. And even if you just, you know, are like me and kind of anxious and shout them out right away, fine. At least you got them out the door. And then, you know, if it is something where when a conversation is emotional, you do get off track because, you know, that emotion is going to take you in a direction. And if you are, you know, sad or angered by a situation, you're going to go right back there and relive it. It's yeah. really hard not to. So yeah. that's where, you know, like maybe just having, you know, practiced it a few times with those different emotions and, you know, having the script that, you know, Tim and I just both mentioned, having that so you can kind of just look down at it when you feel like maybe we're going the wrong way with this um, is a good way to just get your bearings. And then also, I, I think the other thing that I think about is you don't have to do it alone. Right. is that you can have somebody there with you. And for me, just having another person in the room helps ground me. It yeah. just helps me be calmer having someone else there. They don't necessarily have to say anything, but just that touch, that presence can really help me stay focused and grounded. Yeah. And I've been fortunate. I've never, I've had to do a legis I only had to do one legislative thing by myself. So. <laughs> Most of them, you will find that if you are interested in an issue, there are other people in the state who are also interested in the same issue. Maybe not for the same reason, and maybe they don't even want the same resolution that you do, but that shared interest will definitely have a great conversation. Well, Bridget, I wanna thank you. And um, any more questions in the chat, please feel free to put them in as we sort of close out here. Um, but I, I, I know that, you know, I put a number of things into the chat and I'll, I'll attach, I'll, I'll compile a resource sheet that includes the different um, resources from Family Voices and that'll be with the video as well when we get it posted. Um, but I'm looking forward to taking part of the Advocacy for Change Day in March um, and I hope other people would join us. Um, so Bridget, thank you so much. Thank you. This is really fun. So thanks so much, Tim. And uh, please contact us with any questions. Advocacy for Change is March 23rd and 24th. Registration is now open. You can uh, register by going to our website. And I know that there's a cost associated, but there's also scholarships available. Correct. If you are a first time family member, you can get a scholarship. So there won't be cost. It will be covered. Um, nice. All right. Well, thanks again, Bridget. I hope you have a, a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for coming Thank on. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>